On the 8th of May, 1861, John Sullivan was born to parents of a mixed marriage at 41 Eccles Street, Dublin, opposite the Matter Hospital, founded in the same year. He was the youngest of five children, four boys and one girl. It was the custom at the time that the sons of a mixed marriage followed their father's faith, while daughters were formed in the faith of their mother. And so on July 15, 1861, John Edward Sullivan was christened at the nearby St. George's Church of Ireland, where his older brothers Edward, Robert and William had also been baptised. He was born into a life of early Victorian elegance. His first world was one of banquets and high society gatherings. Ireland was still a British possession, and Dublin Castle, the centre of administration, was regularly the scene of glittering state functions. Members of the Sullivan family often attended. Later in 1861, the family moved to 30 Fitzwilliam Place. This photograph of the Sullivan children was taken five years later, and John is seated centre of the front row. His mother, Lady Elizabeth, or Bessie Sullivan, came from a prosperous Catholic family, the Baileys, from Passage West in County Cork. She was a woman of great character, deeply religious, devoting much of her time to charitable work. His father, Sir Edward, was the son of a wealthy provision and wine merchant in Mallow, County Cork. He entered the legal profession and was regarded as one of Ireland's greatest barristers, becoming Lord Chancellor in 1883. In John Sullivan's childhood, high-wheeled baby carriages and nannies with starched uniforms filled the streets and public parks each morning. In later years, Father John told how his nurse would stop to pray in the nearby church and bring the young John with her. At the age of 11, he arrived in Enniskillen, County Fermanagh, to join the Royal School of Portora, the boarding school attended by his older brothers. The school register at Portora shows the somewhat hesitant handwritten entry by John. The headmaster at the time was Dr. William Steele, a distinguished Greek and Latin scholar. Headmaster Steele was a just and fearless administrator, he helped form young John's character, creating a lasting interest in the classics. John spent eight years at Portora. At times he seemed a lonely figure, seeking solitude on the banks of the River Erne or on the holy island of Devonish and the monastery of the Chaldees. On the 18th of October, 1877, his brother Robert was drowned in Kalini Bay while trying to rescue two friends. A sudden squall had capsized their boat, and his remains were never found. John was just sixteen, and still a boarder at Portora. Many years later, he wrote movingly of the grief experienced by his mother on Robert's tragic death. John excelled at secondary school. Among his many prizes was a study of Greece by Professor Mahaffey of Trinity College, Dublin. His many medals and books are preserved at Clongos Wood College in County Kildare. In 1879, John entered Trinity with the best possible credentials as the star pupil of Royal Portora. He graduated in 1883 receiving a senior moderatorship and a gold medal in classics. Once described as the best-dressed young man about Dublin, John took an active part in the social life of the capital. He was an expert whist player and developed a particular passion for cycling and mountain climbing. John's father died in 1885, and shortly afterwards he left for London. From there he travelled extensively throughout Europe and Asia Minor, spending some time at the Greek Orthodox Monastery of Mount Athos, where he made many friends.
Returning from Greece, John became ill and stayed with his brother Edward in London. Smallpox was soon diagnosed at the isolation hospital in Highgate. It was to be a long and lonely time for John. But he recovered and practised for a short time in chambers as a barrister in London. His extensive travels were perhaps symptomatic of a certain restlessness and soul-searching. It was undoubtedly a period of reflection about his future direction in life, culminating in his decision to become a Catholic. On the 21st of December, 1896, he was received into the Catholic Church by Father Michael Gavin at the Jesuit Church, Farm Street in London. On his return to Dublin, his mode of life changed. He continued his career as a barrister, but withdrew from his former social life and banished luxuries from his bedroom in Fitzwilliam Place. He also set about quietly visiting the poor in city slums and the sick and the dying in the hospice at Harrow's Cross. Two years later, in 1898, his mother died peacefully. John was deeply devoted to her, and had her grave in Deansgrange Cemetery lined with lilies. Of his mother he wrote, To her prayer and resignation to God's will, I believe I owe everything. His mother's death helped focus things further for John, and in 1900 he decided to enter the Jesuits. On the 7th of September that year, at the age of 40, he began his training at the Jesuit novice ship in Rahan, near Tullamore. Seven years later, he was ordained to the priesthood in the Society of Jesus and celebrated his first Mass in the chapel of the Irish Sisters of Charity at Mount St. Anne's Milltown in Dublin. 